Joey Knight, John Cody, Friday Night Rewind. We're here at Wildcat Stadium, Wesley Chapel hosting Sun Lake. But elsewhere, Cody, a lot of great action around the area. Elsewhere at Chamberlain, venerable Chiefs coach Billy Turner goes after career win number 250. Is this not working? What? I just... I just Wesley put batteries in it. I Chapel. put it down for one second to take a bite of pizza. Wesley Dude, Chapel. somebody, again, another week, another problem. Hold it, girls. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, just hold it. Infinite skills. Oh, oh. TampaBay.com is the source you trust. We got imitators, but they don't do sports like us. We got the... County battles and crosstown rivalries. Highlight Central, we hit you with what you gotta see. If you're not in the crowd, online is where you gotta be for Friday Night Rewind, the season two odyssey. Here with Chamberlain's Dante Acock, Anthony Williams, and longtime Chamberlain coach, the Dean of Hillsborough County Coaches, and a charter member of the West Tampa Yacht Club, yep. Coach Billy <laughs> Turner. Coach, in commemoration of your 250th career win, we want to present you with a Friday Night Rewind t-shirt. Please wear it proudly. A bunch of Jefferson kids transferred to Chamberlain in the offseason, so you knew this Dragons-Chiefs encounter would be intense. Chiefs quarterback Dante Acock had a splendid night, but one of his early passes to Jefferson transfer Anthony Williams was fumbled. Tonight was one of our better nights for uh, passing, and uh, our offensive line went out there and blocked and uh, gave me the, the, uh, the, the protection to throw the ball tonight. Williams finished with 163 yards and two TDs on six catches. Acock threw for 200 and ran for 123, picking up the running slack when tailback Kenny Allen was ejected. There's Mark Winters for Jefferson, who ran for 68 yards and two TDs. That touchdown cut the Chiefs' lead to 22 to 15. And for a time, it looked as if Coach Turner's 250th career win and 200th at Chamberlain would be in peril. Goal line, Coach. No one blocked him. No one blocked him. No one blocked him. He ran after the fake. He ran after the fake bootleg. No one blocked him. So no one blocked him. But Turner had a counteroffensive. Throw the post. Throw the deep post. I'm going to just say the ball in the eye, go get it. It's just, I just got game speed. They think I'm slow because of my size, but people see different when I'm on the field. That post pass for touchdown gave Chamberlain a 28-15 lead. After that, Acock sealed things by keeping it on the ground and eating clock, scoring on a 44-yard TD run that made the final score 42 to 21. That was the icing on the cake. <laughs> 200 wins at one school. Uh, well, that's a milestone. 200, but 250 ain't nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> what do you mean uh, ain't nothing? 200 at one school is. I'm proud of that. Yeah, that cake looked awfully delicious, and 250 wins is pretty impressive. I saw a guy win his fifth game, but it was a much more exciting contest. Check out Lakewood's victory over Largo. First quarter got a little rough, right? Yes, sir. Second quarter got a little rough, right? Yes, sir. Third quarter looked a little rough, right? Yes, sir. But you guys refuse to quit. Just who did Lakewood think they were Thursday night? The Boston Red Sox? Trailing 24-6 with seven minutes remaining, Jacquez Jenkins drops back and hits Bernard Reedy for a 55-yard touchdown catch. And on the very next series, Jenkins keeps it himself, scrambling out to the right. He's going to dive for the pylon right here. Suddenly, with four minutes left, it's 24-19. The Spartans defense was excellent all night and they hold Largo to a three and out. Get the ball back with 155 left. They gotta go 82 yards and here's a big chunk of it. Watch this catch. Wow, Bernard Reedy lands on his head but hangs onto the ball and that sets up the seven yard slant to Marcus Jackson. And with 35 seconds left, that puts the Spartans ahead 26 to 24. Largo's gonna get one last chance. Ryan Epps is gonna Drop back right here, he's looking for Mike Lang, but he's gonna find, hey, Marcus Jackson, you just scored. You're gonna score again? Two touchdowns within 10 seconds? Unbelievable. That makes it 32 to 24. The Spartans can now lay claim to being Pinellas County's best team. 255 yards in the fourth quarter against a team that had allowed 140 per game all year. That's Bernard Reeder right there. He's saying, yeah, we're number one. And a little dance for the fans to celebrate this win. 
I think the tide started to change a little bit in the game, and uh, I think our guys started to spill a little blood. And uh, from there, the guys just buckle in. I mean, we conditioned like crazy. And I think we saw the guys maybe start getting a little fatigued over there, and then somebody said, you know what, they tired. And then our guys really buckle down. But he has a great program over there, and we're just happy even, even, even to be on the field with those guys. <laughs> Nature Coast entered this game tonight. The Shark Tank is the best team on the North Sun Coast. Yeah. Now they're the best team on the North Sun Coast and beyond. Yeah. After a 41-14 yeah. win go, against South Sumter, thorough, dominating, convincing, and South Sumter is one of the best small school programs in the state. Yeah. The Sharks' defense was brilliant. South Sumter, which hadn't lost to a North Sun Coast team this decade, never really got its no-huddle offense in gear and finished with only 156 rushing yards. Nature Coast, by contrast, got better as the game went on. You see uh, Tevin Drake right here. He finished with 99 yards rushing, and Mike Fields had six catches for 125 yards, including a 78-yard TD. You know, a lot of people don't know about South Sumter, but they're the team up here. Mm -hmm. They're the measuring stick, and so you know you want to play them and play them well. And you know we felt like last year we missed out on some opportunities, and we kind of talked about it being the third overtime tonight. So um, you know we were ready for it. You know, I know they were ready for us, and it was it was a good game. Cody, I think it's a darn shame what happened to Plant quarterback Aaron Murray in the big win against Hillsborough. Broke his leg, dislocated an ankle. His high school career is over. What a high school career it was. It just doesn't seem fair. High quality, high character kid, Aaron, get well soon. I think that Largo's loss Thursday night to Lakewood is actually going to be a very good thing for the Packers if they use it properly. But I got news for you guys. You can't rest on last year's laurels, and nobody is afraid of you anymore. Do you hear me? Nobody fears Largo anymore. Cody, I think Chamberlain gets upset by Alonzo next week. Uh, the Chiefs were susceptible to the pass against Jefferson in that big win, and Kenny Allen, the star tailback, ejected from the Jefferson game, won't play against the Ravens. I think Chamberlain wins that game by 21. I just want to be on the record so I can tease you next week. I also think that Palm Harbor University finally breaks through and gets to the 500 mark. They've never won more than four games. They're already there this year. Four straight victories after winning Friday night 21 to 7. And they got Clearwater and Pinellas Park left. They're going to win six. I think the golf Hudson game next Saturday has lost all luster. Hudson's offense just hasn't gotten on track this year. I think golf wins big. And I think Bernard Reedy sends a shiver up my leg every time the ball goes in his direction. I expect a big play to happen, and most of the time, he delivers. Keep your legs still. It's time for Friday Night Rewind Shoutout! It's time for shoutouts, and we had a lot of good performances this week, starting with Brian Morris of Dunedin. With Adaris Bellamy out the shoulder injury, he had eight carries for 105 yards and helped Dunedin to an upset victory over Tarpon Springs. Let's give a shout out to a team that doesn't get many, Blake. Yellow Jackets are in the first win of the season, 14 and nothing against Brandon. Ethan Engelberg, he's becoming a regular on the show. He had 105 yards rushing, three touchdowns, four extra points, one field goal, king at homecoming. Orson Charles and Alan Sampson of Plant combined for 325 receiving yards, Cody, in that big win against Hillsborough. Jacquez Jenkins, we saw highlights of him earlier, but I have to mention 350 yards passing, 49 yards rushing, four touchdowns total. Cody Armwood's Angelo Hadley return an interception 35 yards for a touchdown in the shutout of Plant City. That's the second time in as many weeks he has returned to pick for a TD. Eric Miller, CCC quarterback tonight, two touchdowns running, two touchdowns passing. They barely beat St. Pete Catholic 35-34. Remember this name, Cody, Ricky Trinidad, Mitchell, sophomore, 170 rushing yards, a touchdown, and an interception deep in his own territory late in the game to preserve a 16-13 win against Ridgewood. And speaking of people that usually don't get shout outs on the show, Hernando Christian Academy, 7-0, that's a school record. Nate Kautsky had 103 yards rushing and two touchdowns for the Lions. And finally, Springstead's Dominic Roberson. Seven receptions, 74 yards, and a TD, a sack, and an interception, and a shutout of Central. The Eagles have not allowed a point since September 26th. That's a long time ago. First, he sends us to the wrong place, and then he takes the batteries out of my microphone. He's, he's gonna pay for this. Holy mother! This is Friday Night Rewind.